Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Now forget about you, forget about me for a minute. Let's see how our guest is, Mr. Zavon Hines. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm good, thank you. Well, thank you for joining me. It's a, ma a massive pleasure to have you on here. Um, you joined West Ham Academy. Can you tell us a little story? Tell us how you went from Little Zavon to West Ham Academy, Zavon. <laughs> little Zavon. Um, yeah, um, I, I was playing for my Sunday league um, team at the time. Um, and we played in like Watford and I think I was 15 at the time so it's quite late and um, we went uh, we was playing in the amateur se section of the, the tournament I think it was the Watford International Tournament and West Ham was playing with like the likes of Arsenal and all that, those other clubs in the professional sector over the other side and my, my grassroots team at the time we went all the way to the final and um, I, I scored like four goals in the final, so then the rest was history. So what time, what age did you join the West Ham Academy then? Were you 15? Yeah, so I, I joined when I was um, 15, so I was under 16s. Um, so when back then when I joined, um, I had like six months to get a scholarship. And before that, I never... I've never been in a, the, the system at all. So it was just six months of hard graft. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this silly question here. What is a scholarship? How would you explain it? Because we hear it all the time. Oh, this player's got a scholarship. That player's got a scholarship. But what does it actually mean? Um, a scholarship is like a two-year apprenticeship. So where we, you're basically full time. You get you get paid a little a little wage. Um, not only that, you get to do education as well. So it's not just football. You get a bit of both. Um, so and it's two years. The club's committed to you for two years. Ah, brilliant! See, we always hear it as football fans. We always get told that player X, Y, and Z has got a scholarship, and you just go okay and pretend you know what it is, so you don't look silly. Yeah. But I might as well look silly. I'll take one for the team on that one. Um, is there? Is there? You said you, you sort of joined late to the academy set up at the age of fifteen. Is there a benefit to joining at that age? Um, for me, I think it, there was a benefit because. Um, I was different to everyone else, so I was a little bit raw um, and kind of off the cuff, kind of. And whereas a lot of the other kids that's been in the system, a lot of the stuff they've been coached and they've been nurtured, and some of their raw skills have been coached out of them a little bit. So where I had a little bit more freedom in my play, and I still had a lot to learn, obviously technically, probably tactically, physically as well. I still had a lot to learn, um, but. I think because I was slightly different, I kind of stood out a little bit more. Was it easy to adapt? Because obviously it's other kids would have been in the system from a young age, so they've got sort of access to better training facilities from a younger age, whereas yourself have been playing sort of grassroots football until 15. So was it easy to sort of change environment? No, it was difficult because um, not only the, it was the football environment, but it was like my living environment where I grew up as well. I grew up in Brixton, and back then, um, it were it weren't the the most safest environment or the most um, yeah it was it was difficult at times. But I, I I wouldn't change it. But it that kind of helped me to be more hungry. Um, I know that if I want to be something, I have to work probably twice as hard as everyone else. Um, so environment-wise, it was, it was completely different. Culturally, um, I was mixing with different people from different backgrounds, which was, at the start, was difficult, but over a period of time, it got a little bit easier. Did you ever sort of doubt yourself? Because obviously, like you said, other people have been there for longer than you at a younger age. Did you think, oh, am I good enough at this age, or, or so on and so forth? Um, I think you always have some sort of doubt, but... I always believed in my ability, but then when, as a kid, when certain things goes goes against you, if you're not getting played or not getting picked or you're getting picking out injuries and everyone else is playing or or you're not in the academy full stop and other kids are in the academy, you think you do think, oh, am I actually good enough? But um, I was fortunate to. Um, in every environment that I was in when I was younger, I was always one of the best players, like as a kid. But I just never had that opportunity to go to a professional setup. Yeah, the academy life worked all right for you. You got a captain of the under 18s team as well. 
Yeah, that, that was a good time. Um, so, and to be fair, that was one of my proudest moments because of just just how far I came football football in turn because I was only in like a professional system for like probably a year and a half, two years maximum. Um, and I remember when I was under 16s, I got called up for the um, FA Youth Cup team. So, and that was for me as well, Not ne- never being in a professional system um, and Tony Carr having that faith in me to at least just be a part of the squad um, as a six, as a fifteen year old at the time, or six, just turning sixteen, I thought that was, I felt like privileged, and it was a, it was a good moment for me. And speaking of good moments, made your de- debut against uh, Macclesfield in the cup. What do you remember about that day? When do you get told that you're in the team? Do you get told a few days before, or how does it work? Um, when, well, we was training with the first team at the time, and we didn't. We always hope that we will just be involved at some in some capacity, whether it's to just be in the squad or um, whatever it is. I, and and I, I was in the squad. I didn't think I was going to be on the bench because there was about there was it's a big squad, like and there was top players there. But because it was Macclesfield, in our minds as kids, you're just really hoping that oh yeah, I might just get an opportunity just to be on the bench because being on the bench itself is is an achievement. So then, when I was named on the bench um, before the game, I was obviously I was excited, I was buzzing. Um, but then I didn't even think I would come on. <laughs> so then, you, you come on, you got your goal, you scored. Yeah, I know. So that's what I'm saying. So one, once I did come on, and I knew this was like an opportunity for me to just like be like, yeah, I need to leave some sort of mark. Or, but you, you never know. And I just wanted to make the most of that opportunity because I, I never know if I was going to get another opportunity after that. So to come on and score, um, that was just another big achievement for me as well. As a, as a young player, when it comes to the cup draws at a Premier League club, are you hoping they get like a lower league side thinking, well, the manager might rotate a little bit and they're, oh, I'll get my chance. Whereas if they get drawn against a Premier League side, chances are the youngsters ain't getting in. Does it make a difference to you watching the draws as a youngster? I, I think at the time, yeah, um, you always hope because we had like good players, we had great players when I was coming through, like, and especially especially attacking players. We had like Dean Ashton, Carlton Cole, um, and a few other players as well, and then a few other youngsters um, that was older than me at the time, but was ahead of me probably. Um, so you naturally think, uh, if it's a if it's a lower league club, nine times out of ten, the manager will put like, not a weakened team, but like the players that hasn't been playing as much. So for me, I was always hoping that. But then at the same time, if if it, if there was injuries or anything like that, I would still hope that I'll be in in and around it, which was which was good. Yeah, you got injured that season, but you got a new deal sort of around the springtime two thousand nine. What's it like? And- well, how, did, how does it work? Does your agent ring you up and say West Ham put a, a new contract, a new professional contract on the table for you, kind of thing? How does it? How does that work? Um, I can't remember completely at the time, but I I remember getting injured, and I, obviously I was frustrated because I just I made my like debut, and I was like, oh, this is good. Like I'm making good progress. Um, so no one likes to get injured, and no one wants to be injured. Um, and I, I obviously my agent at the time. She, they were speaking to the club and I think obviously the club still had a little bit of faith and hope in my, my ability to be able to progress after this injury because it, um, so they offered me, I've, I think it was another year just to prove myself again, I guess, um, and which was a good thing. Yeah, you start too involved in pre-season and I've got three individual games to speak about briefly with you. Uh, the first one, you know what one's coming, the Millwall one, that cup game. What do you remember about that? The day, the night, the game itself. What do you remember about it? The day, the day itself was um, was extraordinary. <laughs> Just say that because um, it's it's nothing that I've ever been a part of. Bear in mind, I've come through the academy, so we're playing in front of no fans. <laughs> Just our parents and a um, few scouts probably, and and then apart. Other than that, when we're playing in the reserves game, it's, there's no one. So then to be involved in that, the lead up to the game, like I remember when we was at the hotel, we we're hearing that there's so many fans there and there's so many things that's going off. 
And then the manager was just said to us, you just have to focus on the game. Um, because when, when you're hearing these things, it can distract you. Um, but lucky enough, like, we weren't too distracted in the end. Um, and then I remember coming to the game, we was on the coach and the roads into Upton Park Stadium, it was so packed. It felt, it did feel like a Champions League game. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a big thing. And it's just, yeah, it was just packed. And that's when I finally realised the, the real, real meaning of this match. Because normally we, we see fans there anyway. Um, we see the passion in the fans' eyes. But I think this one, it meant more than anything for us to win this game. And then I remember getting into this, um, getting into the stadium, coming off the coach, fans um, sh like cheering, shouting and all of that sort of nice stuff. And I remember getting into the dressing room at the time and um, one of the staff just said that they've heard that there's been a stabbing. I'm like, oh my, this this game is act is, is, is real. Like, um, this this means a lot to them. Um, so then being a being a um, graduate as well, like I, I kind of knew, I kind of, <laughs> not fully, like I had a little idea of what it, that match meant anyway. And then being a part of it itself and knowing what's been going on before the game and then being involved in the game and seeing some stuff from the pitch <laughs> and also from the bench, I was like, oh yeah, this, 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 this is... Um, this is a massive, massive game. Um, a lot of things happen, obviously, that we probably don't condone and don't agree with um, because we want to play football and we want to do it for the fans, but also we want to do it in a safe environment as well. So, um, But the whole day itself was it, was... it was it was different to what I've ever experienced. Did you sleep that night when you got home? Or the adrenaline must have been through the roof. Yeah, it was, but... Um, yeah, because I because I scored as well. Like I, for me, it was a big thing. Like it is massive for me. Like so, um, yeah. I, I I don't sleep anyway. <laughs> when I whenever I played, but when I was playing for West Ham, after every every game, I didn't really sleep because I was that excited. And I think when I, I always think about what it took for me to get there and where I started and came from and all of that kind of stuff. So every mo every game, I just, I loved every minute of it. So even to go to sleep, that means I'm not really enjoying it after. So I wanted to enjoy every moment until the next day, probably. So uh, after, after your goal, you ran to Jack Colson as well. I mean, that was a, a special moment for you two. Yeah. 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 Um, so me and Jack, we, we signed our scholarship at the same time. So he came from Coventry and no, not Coventry, Cambridge. Um, and, he, he was in digs as well. he went into the digs i went into the digs and uh, since that day we we created like a, a a bond that that i never had with someone from a different race basically so i come from brixton predominantly black black people in my environment um and we kind of clicked and I, he understood me as a person but then he never he never um he never judged me for who I, for my thoughts basically and and we we just got along really well um like i went and met his dad his um his mom his sisters his his, his brother um and we got along we even went on holiday a couple of times so we had that we had that friendship and on, up until this day now we still got that friendship and um so yes yeah, for for that to happen the way it happened um yeah, it was for me. It was everything was for him, and just to try to be there for him as much as possible. I know it was difficult because we 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 used to speak. I know what his dad meant to him at the time, and still do. Um, so yeah, that for me that was everything. Good man. My favourite Zavon Hines game, Liverpool. I remember that one. You put Jimmy Cargo on his arse as well. <laughs> you hit the post. I mean, that was that was the game. Um, I remember watching that one, fanboying a little bit here. That was the game I thought, we've got a player here in this lad. Mm -hmm. This lad can play. Um, do you remember much about that night, putting Jimmy Carger on the deck and nicking the ball off him? Um, yeah, I remember that day because um, that's probably one of my best games for the West Ham. Um, and I remember the week before, I 
I was playing in the reserves. So, and I, we played against Bir- Birmingham and and we won 6-0 and I scored a hat-trick in the reserves. And then the, on the Saturday, um, they put me in a starting lineup against w- w- um, Wigan away. So I was confused. I didn't really... Yeah, I was I was shocked, but I was excited at the same time. And then I done reasonably well in that game, so I'm thinking, okay, I done well. He's going to take me out <laughs> and put another one of the experienced pro in in for the Liverpool game. It's a bigger team, it's a big club. And then when I saw that I was on the starting on the Friday when we were, st- we were doing our tactics and stuff, I was in the starting team again. I was like, wow, <laughs> I was excited. So that so then I just that night I didn't sleep. I know I didn't sleep because. Um, I was watching players like Gerard and Torres for for years before, so then for me to be going up against them, I'm like, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. But once it got to the day of the game, I, I tried not to um, think about who I'm playing against, but what I'm going to do. Um, so I just try to enjoy the, that moment as much as possible. Um, and I I've always known that with the the top teams, they tend to give you time on the ball sometimes not all the time because a lot of the times they had possession so sometimes mentally mentally they might get a bit complacent and not press as hard as they would normally would so i knew i would get some time on the ball but it's just what i do with it after that and i just try to enjoy that moment as much as possible and um, be effective because i know that if i do something effective they will remember it and not just me just being on the pitch. So I just wanted to be effective and help the team as much as possible. Because I know if I help the team, people will remember me more than if I tried to help myself. You definitely did something effective in the next game I talk about. The Aston Villa one, if you remember that one. You won the pen, but then you mm. scored the winner yeah, in yeah. added time, really, didn't you? You know, your celebration, you went mad for it. You went running across the side of the pitch, it, not quite into the fans, but as close to the fans as you can get. The stewards were in chaos on his yeah. separate hand and stuff. But do you remember that goal? To be fair, I was going to run and jump straight into the fans. I was going to do a Carlos Tevez. <laughs> yeah, he should have done, yeah. I was, but Julian Forbit was holding me, so he, he, weren't, he weren't letting go of me. Um, but yeah, that game, um, no, it was, like I said, like, I'll probably say the cliche stuff all the time that it was ex- exciting, amazing, all of that kind of stuff. But until you're someone that, until you're in it or you've done it, it's kind of hard to really explain the feeling that I had. That feeling that I had, I don't think I could replicate it or even explain it because there's so much emotions that go through at the same time. So you can't even put all them emotions into one word. And then to do it in added time and to be, score the winner, I've dreamt, I've dreamt of that. That's that was one of my dreams growing up. So then to actually for it to actually be done and to accomplish it, oh, it's phenomenal. Like it's it's crazy. What was Zola like as a manager? I I loved him. Um, for me personally, because not knowing who he was um, and the career that he had as a player, naturally that for me anyway that gave him that respect. I respected him anyway, but I, um, and then how he was as a man and as a per, as a person in and around the place, he was so humble, um, and he was respected by all the players. And then for me to be coming through the academy and seeing all the the top senior players I was playing for England, like Scotty and um, Coley and Nobs, and that the way they looked up to him and respected him, that. And then how he was to me as a youngster as well. I I, I just loved everything about him. Um, and then he he was the one that fully gave me my opportunity as well. We done a lot of work on the training pitch as well, one to one stuff um, for the strikers. So for me, I lo- I loved everything and the way he approached the game. A bit different to Adam Grant as manager, was he? <laughs> yeah, it was slightly different. Slightly different. Um, I think obviously where Avram Grant he had that respect anyway because he's been he's been at top clubs and he's done good things in his career as well, but um, probably their style was a slightly different um, and how they wanted to approach whether it's training or the game the game is slightly different, um, but not only that like I think the coaching staff that they had their backroom staff at the time was probably different as well so 
the culture slightly changed, but it was it was still a good coach. Um, I had, I had some good moments with him as well. Including the 4 0 win against Man United in the Cup. I mean, that was <laughs> that's got to be one of your better results in your career, is it? Yeah, that, that was a great time and in, in the snowy conditions as well. So uh, I'm not the biggest fan of snow. So, <laughs> uh, so it was it was a good time. Um, obviously, beating Man United, who's a big, massive, they're a massive club. Let's, let's not um, sugarcoat it. And they had some great players. So to be able to do what we've done to them. Um, I think Coley got two at the time and um, Jonathan Spector scored as well. Um, so, and the whole team in general, they they done a great, great job and to be a part of that um, was probably one of my highlights as well. When you were sort of fighting relegation that season, was the cup run a welcome distraction? Did that sort of give you something to look forward to as a football player? Um. I'm not sure, you know. Um, I think every game is, especially being in the being in that uh, relegation battle. As as a club, for me, the cup the cup is not as big as staying in the Premier League. Let's let's be honest. Um, we could win the cup and then get relegated. I think a lot of fans would still be annoyed, and a lot of the players would still be annoyed because all the play, every player wants to play in the Premier League. Let's, and that's that's a fact. So. Um, it weren't a welcome distraction. It was a distraction to say that, um, because in the end, it weren't it weren't the best outcome for us. What's it like um, being in a relegation battle as a player? In terms of, again, you know, you, you just spoke about how you would stay up all night. You couldn't sleep because you were buzzing and stuff. But then the next season, down the bottom, scrapping, are you up all night for different reasons? That you? Yeah, probably. Um, like I said, it's 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 a difficult thing when you're not winning winning as much games as you you think the team should be winning and things are not going the way that it should be should be going. Um, naturally, confidence are low, um, and then things get out. Well, things get um, blown out of context when it's if we was winning, it wouldn't be the same thing. Um, so it's 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 never a good feeling not to be winning games. So it when you're not winning, it affects a lot of things. Whether it's your home life, um, in and around the training ground, your friendships, all of that kind of stuff, it affects it mass massively. And it probably did to to all of us in different ways. Um, which have and then obviously with that, the fans are not happy as well. Because let's be honest, a lot of times we do play games to impress the fans and to entertain and to. Um, just make 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 everyone be proud of us, not only the fans, but our family as well. So if that's not going to plan and we're not winning and we're in a bad mood and our family are not happy, the fans are not happy, life is not the best. Yeah, we got relegated that season, but we um, you got offered a new deal with West Ham, but chose not to accept it. Um, it, were, it weren't my choice. Um, and I've always said it before, like, I remember at the time when I... When I got offered the deal, me, my agent at the time was discussing the, obviously the terms and all of that kind of stuff. Me, remember, I'm just a kid that's just want to play for West Ham. I was injured for like 11 months before that. Um, I came when I came back, so I just wanted to be at the club. I wanted to play football as much as possible. But um, I remember when Sam Allardyce came in. Um, at times there was there's put because I, I they were still discussing the deal. Um, it was pre-season times and then they was putting me in like the reserves and letting me so where they was splitting the squads and doing things like that I felt like they was treating me in a way that they like they didn't really care about me kind of thing um, and there was there was there was just a lot of things that he used to do like to single me out so whereas everyone else was training with the first team I trained with the reserves as well um, and then, but when everyone else is a part of it, like that's when I'll train with the first team. But bearing in mind, before that, I was playing with the first team as well. And I think it's because I didn't sign the deal straight away. Um, so he was trying to, I don't know, maybe bully me as such. But at my agent at the time was just like, oh, just just keep your head down and keep doing what you're doing. When the deal's done, it, it, will, it will be done, kind of thing. Um, and then I remember um, just before I left, which I didn't really want to leave. I've always said it. I never wanted to leave. Um, 
I remember um, going, going into his office with Sam Aldas and we sat down and he was talking to me about the deal and he's like, oh, so he, he just said something like, this is this is what it's going to be and um, what um, he's going to get other players in as well that fits his style. And I'm in the back of my mind, I thought I weren't his type of player anyway because of his previous clubs as well and the players that he had. So I thought maybe I don't fit suit his style, but the way he was speaking to me and the certain things he was saying, it, it was clear to me that he didn't, he, he weren't really bothered if I was at the club or not. So um, I was just like, all right then. And by the time I left, I was just like, I was frustrated because he just made me feel like, yeah, you could go if you want kind of thing. Um, well, well, you come back though. You did come back. Um, under 14's coach at West Ham now. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I'm happy I'm back to be fair because, um, like I said, I didn't want to leave in the first place. But now that I'm able to help and hopefully inspire some of the younger kids to do something that I've done, um, then I'll, I'll be happy with that, just as happy. So hopefully, not only I stay at under 14 levels, but depending on the years and how good I am at coaching and stuff, I can move up the ranks as well. So. Um, yeah, I'm happy I'm back. I'm enjoying it. Um, and a lot of things has changed, but the culture hasn't changed as much, which is good. How, how did it come about? How did you get this coaching job? Um, when I when I decided to stop playing f- football, Jack Collison was the under-18s manager at the time. Um, so obviously we, we've been speaking for years anyway, and he ret- obviously had to retire early. Um, so he just said, I'll oh, just come in and just be around the boys. They'll, they'll love it. And then also see if it's something that you want to start doing, if if it's here or somewhere else. Um, because when I was playing, I never in my mind think, oh, I want to be a coach. Uh, I never. Probably because of all the so poor coaches I've had in, on the way. I've always probably looked at them in the wrong light, which is bad. So, But um, yeah, so I basically went in. And obviously, I was there a few days um, now and again within the space of um, a month or so. I went in one week, not the other week, and a week after. And then I was just in and around it. And then I just I just loved the environment. It just felt like home, felt natural. Um, but also, I loved the fact that I'm able to be, to help someone achieve their dream. Um because one one thing I do live by is um, I, I I want to be someone that I never had growing up. So whether it's a voice, um, someone to talk to, um, someone to mentor, whatever it is, um, I'm a, I'm able to do that through coaching. And because I love football and I, and I know the game, and I'm getting better and doing my like, my badges as well, that this this was the perfect way to do that. So. Um, yeah, it's basically through Jack Collison again. Um, why? Well, uh, and then after that, I, I I started done my A license, no my B, at the club um, two, two summers ago, um, and then now I'm on my A, almost finishing my A. Happy days. If you could give a young Zavon advice now to a 15 year old one, then what would you say to him? What would your advice be? What would my advice be, huh? I've I've had this a few times. Like it changes all the time. <laughs> um, my advice would be um, know know your why. So why you started playing football, and be consistent in your in whatever you do. Good that well, kids. If you're watching that, there's your advice. There's your advice from the under fourteen's coach at West Ham. Like, a couple of fun questions to end on Zamon. Best player you yeah. play with at West Ham. Simple as that. Best player, um, Scott Parker. Be- best ca- biggest character in the dressing room when you were there. Um, Cotton Cole is <laughs> a character. Um, who else? Nobs is a character as well. Um, who else? What's his name? Victor Bina. 
Oh, yeah, was he, was he a character, was he? Yeah, he was <laughs> um, character. Yeah. Uh, and John, I, John, Pencil, John, John Pencil. I remember uh, John Pencil, he was a character. Brilliant. Uh, what did they do? Give us a story. You must have a story. Stories? No, it's just how they are as people, and they just like to have fun and like to have banter. And, um, I haven't got any story in particular, but it's just how they, they conducted themselves, and they, they were just... Yeah, they just they just made me laugh all the time about all different things, and I, I just thought, yeah, they're good people. Good man. Favorite memory of the West Ham shirt? Favorite memory? Yeah. Walking out Upton Park against uh, Liverpool. I'll give you goosebumps. Yeah, that that there. Um, I remember it like it was yesterday, um, and then the lineup. Um, Obviously, like I'll say, scoring goals and all of that kind of stuff, like it, it's it's always great. But for me, just being able to play for West Ham um, with the fans singing the song, um, I think that's priceless. Like you can't get that for, at any other club. Fantastic! Listen, Zavon, thank you very much. We massively appreciate you popping on. Really appreciate it. No no you problem. guys, are, you guys, at home, you've enjoyed the interview. Drop a like, comment, subscribe to YouTube channel. Myself and Gonzo will be back very soon. <laughs> <laughs>